I'm just moving on another one of my pepper plants. I'm taking a couple indoors today. It is starting to get quite cool at night, so it's not really suitable for peppers. So I've selected two or three that are quite nice looking plants. They'll make a really nice decorative perennial plant indoors. And I'm just going around taking away any little buds like these. We don't want those. They're going to try and grow peppers. And it's just not suitable through autumn or winter unless you've got a really brightly lit warm place to keep your peppers and then you could actually carry them on and I've noticed we've also got a few flowers that are trying so again pinching all those off and just having a quick look around this plant and see if there's any leaves that are browning because obviously we'll take those off as well we want a nice clean plant when it goes indoors and it doesn't look bad to be fair if you remember, we cut this one right back quite a while ago. It had lots of long branches and leaves sticking out everywhere. And they were starting to go a bit yellow. They were old leaves, they were very tired. So before you take your peppers indoors, you need to take all those off. And that was quite a few weeks ago. And if you look now, we've got loads and loads of fresh growth. You can strip them back to barely nothing, but in my experience, they don't survive too well when you do that. So we're treating this one as a perennial houseplant. It was in one of these caravan wash bowls, which is perfectly fine when it's outside. But when it's indoors, you want something that looks a little bit more attractive. And I've got some of these really nice plastic containers and they look like a barrel and they've got a really nice bronze tinge to them. So I think that'll be perfect. And we can put that in a sunny windowsill and see how it gets on. So basically, it's just a case of taking it out of that wash tub. They come out so easy and popping it into a new one. But I'm gonna add a bit of fresh compost at the bottom of here. But usually what happens is that because you've got holes in for your drainage, which you do need, any fresh compost, which is quite fine, falls through at bottom then that causes a bit of a problem because if you move it around your house you're going to have compost dropping all over your carpet you don't want that so what I'm going to do is put a bit of fleece across bottom water will pass straight through that no problem at all this is just an old piece that I've got but if I put it in the bottom of that container it'll hold that compost in place so none can fall through while at the same time allowing good drainage so we just need to cut a little piece of this off, pop it in there, and then we'll add us compost. I just need to go and hunt for some scissors. Found them. I'm just gonna roughly cut a piece of material. It don't need to be precise for what we're doing. Can always cut it a little bit more afterwards. So we've got a nice sized piece. I'm just gonna cut this side off as well. It's got quite a big hole in it, which is the reason I'm using it. And I think that will do. One other thing that I've done with this container is I've given it a really good clean out and I've blasted it with hose pipe because you could end up with insect eggs underneath this rim or little baby slugs. So we want to make sure this is nice and clean before we take it indoors. And I think that's all right now. So we'll pop this in and we'll see how it fits. What we're wanting to do is stop that compost falling out. So nothing too fancy at all. Then we'll add a bit of fresh compost into the bottom of there. And press that down as well. I 
We don't want to add too much though because we've got to get this plant in yet. So now I've got that part done, I can cut away some of this excess. We don't need it now. And then we'll see how this plant fits in. I've roughed the bottom up on this plant as well, so you can see we've got loads of roots there. And it doesn't matter if it pushes that fleece down because it's on the bottom, which is where we want it. And then we'll push that down. And that is basically a perfect fit. But I'm just gonna nip it back out. I'm gonna put a little bit of fish blood and bone at the bottom of there. So this plant's got some feed to keep it going. And then I can drop it straight back in. We'll make sure we put that in nice and firm. And that's this plant set up. So I think you'll agree that looks a lot better. It's a really nice container. It's not a bad size. And we're not trying to grow this plant any bigger through autumn and winter. We're just trying to keep it alive. But we can always check the root system because you can see how easily they come out of these containers. So now it's a case of just going around and removing any bits and bobs that we might have missed. Old brown buds and leaves. We don't want any of those. And we'll take ourselves in a really nice clean plant. I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh compost to the top of this. Because there's plenty of nutrients in this new compost. That's going to help it along. And we can fill in any holes while we're doing it as well. But when you do this, don't bury your pepper plant any deeper than it originally were. Because you probably noticed by now, the main stem started to go a little bit woody. So don't bury that part. What I'll do with that is I'll take it back outside again and I'll blast it with hose pipe, make sure I've got rid of any excess dirt on the rim or on the sides of this container. And it won't hurt to do it with your peppers, just to make sure there's no little critters hiding under these leaves. Because again, you don't want to be taking those indoors. And if you've got your peppers in a bigger container, it's a good idea to downgrade it. They don't need to be in massive containers to put indoors. And we've added that feed, but that's the only feed this plant will get until next spring. Because once again, it doesn't need it. It's just sustaining, it's not growing, and it's definitely not going to be producing any fruit unless you choose that option. So for me, that is now all set up, ready for that blast with that hose pipe to ensure everything is nice and clean when it goes in. So if you want to overwinter your peppers, it's a really easy thing to do. Just downgrade that container, make sure the new container you put it in is really clean and there's no little baby snails or slugs hiding under those rims. Make sure all your leaves are really clean. No aphids or anything like that. But if you do find anything like that on your leaves, just mix up some water with a little bit of dishwater and blast underneath all your leaves all around and all your stem and that will take care of those or you could just blast them off with an eye powered jet and once they're off you're taking it indoors so they'll be fine just remember that these plants need a good amount of light through autumn and winter you can't just put them in a dark corner and forget about them because they will slowly start to die you don't need to water them all the time like you would when they're outdoors or in a greenhouse you just need to give them a little bit of water and they'll be fine for a few weeks. And you'll always know when they definitely need some water because the leaves are gonna to start to droop. So treat them like you would any other house plant. The main thing is they go in all cleaned up in a nice container. And then we'll see if we can get this growing even bigger come next spring when we'll then move it on into something bigger. And I've already done the same thing with this one. And it is starting to drop leaves now with it being cold. 
which is perfectly normal. But this one has come on really well since we did that. I think we did this around a month ago or something. And since then, it again has put lots of new growth on. And it's starting to try and flower. And as I said, that's up to you. If you want to take it indoors, keep it nice and warm and give it loads of light, whether it be by grow lights or a really good sunny window, then you could try and grow peppers. But you will have to self-pollinate them because there's going to be nothing in there to do that job for you. I think it's about time the plants went inside now because it is just going to get colder and colder and the light levels aren't very good. So if you do decide to try and grow peppers over winter and you're only using sunlight, that's not really going to work. They need 8 to 10 hours of light a day, so you'd have to use some grow lights for that purpose. But 6 to 7 hours of sunlight or bright light, even if it's overcast today, will just keep them plants ticking over until 2024. And because they've been cut back and they're now starting to get new growth, it will then put out new branches during new season and that plant will be twice the size as it was the year before it will produce more flowers which is going to give you more fruit but just look after it over the next few months and you're going to have a couple of really happy perennial indoor pepper plants if you've got any other questions regarding overwintering your peppers we have got videos that we've done in the past that you could have a look through or if it's a question in particular just drop a comment and I'll get that answer for you as soon as possible. But for now, even though it's a really sunny day, it's the day that all this rain's starting and that's going to carry on for quite a while. So all these little jobs, I'm getting done at Greenhouse, moving them indoors and then we're all set up for a new season. If you want to see what else I'm doing over at weekend, please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care.